you are feeling betrayed by God, then I want to let you know that you're not alone. And in this video, I'm going to share with you a common mistake that I see people make when they are feeling betrayed or hurt by God and five things to actually redirect your energy and to stay close to God, even in the season where you want to be far from him. The truth is, is that you need God. He's the one who's going to heal you and love. he is loving you. And that may be something you don't want to hear right now, but at, the, at some level, you probably deeply want to hear that. I'm talking to the Christian who is who has had a strong faith in God and who has had something really tragic happen, whether that's at church, at work, in your home, financially, maybe chronic illness. I don't know where you are in your journey. And so this is going to be a general video, but I hope these things might be helpful to you in any one of the seasons that I mentioned or that you find yourself in, however God wants to use this. This video is not going to be on the theology of suffering. I'm not going to explain why this has happened, but I'm going to help you to respond to God in a way that's going to be helpful for you, no matter where you are at. I'm not a licensed counselor. I'm a spiritual director, and I walk with people who are feeling lost, disconnected, who want to grow in their relationship and intimacy with God. And I've walked with people who are just not sure where God is. and. We together will kind of sit in the boat in the storms of life and just look for God and help to and I help discern where He is. What has been helpful for people who are experiencing intense um, pain in their life or feeling betrayed, who are asking those questions like, "Why God? Where were you? Why didn't you protect me? Why has this happened?" How come? This is not to answer any of those questions, and I don't even know if God's going to answer these questions for you. I'm not going to defend God at all. He can speak for himself. The scriptures are there. I'm speaking to the person who's feeling betrayed by God, who is looking for some guidance on how to rebuild their faith in the midst of a season that is tumultuous, that it feels like you are in turbulence and it's not letting up. Or maybe there's a slow ache of, you know, something happened a long time ago and it's never quite sat right with me. So maybe you have done the thing that has been unhelpful and you've had a perception of God that has been destructive. I'm going to talk about why that destructive view of God doesn't help you and what to do instead. I'm already assuming that you know that God is good, that you know in the scriptures that God can really do no evil. So I'm basing this talk on somebody who has faith in God. You're not questioning God's existence. You're not even, you are a Christian. You haven't had, you've had an intimate relationship with God and you still long for one, but you're feeling betrayed. But how do you personally navigate your relationship with God through this storm? One of the hardest things about feeling betrayed by God is that he's the one you need the most. He's the one that has the healing, the comfort, the guidance, the presence that you need to get through the season. And if he's the person that you're feeling betrayed by or hurt by, he's probably the last person you want to spend time with. And yet at the same time, you probably deep down know that you want to spend time with God because you need to spend time with God. And that can feel like a huge conflict. One of the biggest mistakes I see Christians make when they are feeling betrayed by God or they're not sure what he's doing is to have hard thoughts towards God. Hard thoughts are stronger than just the normal questions of why did this happen to me or where were you God or I needed you or I'm angry with you but hard thoughts are when we actually start to project human evil onto God we start to see God as evil as even demonic as malicious as male malevolent um did I say that right and when we start to attribute those words to God, it can, or that image, it distorts our image of who he really is. And we don't actually get to encounter the real God because we craft in our minds this narrative to go along with who God is. So in this season, we have to stay in the truth of who God is, that he is good, he is sovereign, he is all those things. And at the same time, make space for those questions, those questions like, where were you, God? Why did this happen? I needed you. All those questions. There's no questions that are off limits for God. There's no, no feelings that are off limit to share with God. It's just when we have hard thoughts about him, just like the, the phrase hard thoughts, it becomes, so they can become cemented in our relationship with God. Our view of him can become cemented and distorted, and that can really hinder us for a couple of reasons. Number one is they hide us from God. He's the one we need. Remember in the Garden of Eden when um, Adam and Eve had sinned and they you know, knew that they were naked, so they went and got fig leaves and covered themselves. And then when God showed up in the garden and was like, where are you? They said, "I'm, you know, we're afraid because we're naked. You know, He said, who told you to, <laughs> that you were naked? Adam and Eve hid from God as opposed to saying, 
God, thank you, you're here, I'm so happy. You know what to do. You'll know exactly how to deal with the shame. They would use their own strength and their own ability to control, which was pretty poor, and they tried to resolve the issue on their own to cover themselves up with fig leaves, which are unstable, you know, leaves. Covering yourself up with leaves, you know that would just not work. Um, and God was kind, he actually you know, made this for sacrifice and covered them with animal skins. When we start to have hard thoughts towards God, we can become apathetic towards him and then we hide ourselves from him. And when we need him the most, that can be really detrimental to our process for healing whatever we've gone through. It also isolates us from God. So if you are feeling um, alone, it can double your pain, especially when you're feeling betrayed. What you need is presence. You need somebody to be with you and to feel comfort when you're feeling betrayed because it can be so isolating. And so when we have hard thoughts towards God, it perpetuates the isolation that we feel. And then we can also develop unhealthy coping mechanisms when we have hard thoughts because we're not going to a God who loves us and who wants the best for us and who's actually mission is to enable us to have an abundant life in him, to have a life of worth and value and restoration and healing, will actually go towards unhealthy coping mechanisms, whether that's drinking or binge watching or overeating or whatever. It, it doesn't, when we cut off from our life source, we, are, we, be, we strategize on how to get what we want in other ways so we can develop unhealthy coping mechanisms too. In this hard season, it could be so easy because our capacity for resisting temptation goes down when we are feeling weak and we are feeling distraught. And so we need more care, more protection, and that can be a huge hindrance. We also can waste our potential. If we become you know, stuck in our hard thoughts about God, then we will shut off from the one who's created us to do good works. Our future self, or the future of your family, of the people that you will interact with and bless through your gifts and through your spiritual gifts, through your talents will become damaged because you're not connecting to God or you're not um, staying on the process of healing that relationship. You may actually lose your potential or a thriving life and living the life that God has called you, which is the life that you were made for. And you can waste your your future if you, if you continue and actually cement in these hard thoughts about God. And then the last thing I'll say is we can waste our hurt. I don't know what the purpose of the hurt that you're going through is, and you may actually never know that purpose. And that might be hard to hear, however, you will come to a place of contentment. You will come to a place of trust and assurance. I know because I've seen it in a lot of people and I've experienced it myself that has not circumvented any of the wrestling and the agony and the back and forth and the grief process and the anger, but it has come to a place where there is hope. I wouldn't want to have wasted my hurt. I wouldn't want to get bitter or cold or sour towards God because that affects so many other things. and. I don't want to waste the hurt that I'm feeling. Whether or not God intended for this stuff to happen or he had instruments in it or even he was withheld certain amounts of protection, I don't know. However, I don't want to waste my hurt. I wouldn't want to and I've seen people do it and it's sad because that is a, could be an opportunity for you really to grow in trust. This is a huge opportunity and you may not want to hear that right now. So. I'm, I'm empathize and I'm, you know, I don't know what you're going through specifically. So if we were again talking one-on-one, -on -one, it might be different, but I'm, I'm encouraging you, a sister, if you're my brother or sister, um, to, to not waste your hurt. So what do you do? What do you do when you're feeling betrayed by God if you don't have hard thoughts towards God and you don't wanna cement and, and create a false God image around whatever you're experiencing? So let me give you some things that you can do that I found to be really helpful that helped me and that have helped other people that I've met with or just I've seen in the Christian life. Number one, ask, ask God about what happened. Ask him those questions. Why did this happen? How come? Where were you? You probably aren't gonna get answers, but what it does is it allows you to stay in prayer. It enables you to stay connected and talk to God about whatever you're going through. And even if you're angry at God, I encourage you to stay because anger, anger keeps you connected to God. It's when you're apathetic and when you've developed hard thoughts that you, when you give up and you say, I don't want you and, you, and you throw up that wall, that's when you're in danger of hurting your relationship with God. But he can handle your anger. If we look at the Psalms, there's a ton of, he might give you a list right here of all the Psalms that are rants at God. 
this is what God can hear. God can hear these things. It might feel unnerving because you may not have been able to share this stuff with your parents, but your parents have egos, but God doesn't. He knows what he's about. He may push back on you, but you need to stay in dialogue with him. So that is one of the best ways to continue to press in with God and to stay active in your relationship with God while telling the truth. Be honest. Do not sugarcoat it. God already knows what you're thinking anyway. Use your hurt to enter into it and actually to walk towards healing. If the first one, if being with God and telling him how you're feeling, it's just not something you're ready to do, this is where it's really helpful to meet with a spiritual director or somebody that you trust who isn't gonna fix you, who isn't gonna tell you what you should think or how you should be or be offended by what you say, but to allow you to let it rip with God and allow another person to go with you to the throne of grace. And climb on the back of their faith. Allow them to be the space where you can formulate the questions, for them to maybe reflect blind spots, to maybe encourage you. They may be um, a gift from God that you might experience Jesus with skin on. You might experience love and compassion from this person. I hope you do, especially if you're with a spiritual director who can handle harder things of life, who has gone on their own journey. I know that me meeting with spiritual directors or friends that have been able to hear my deepest pain has been honey to my soul. I encourage you to get with another person because they can help you go to the depths of your soul with God and they are just kind of like with you. They're just kind of like with you in the boat and they can shine lights on things to help you navigate. So I encourage you to get with a person if you can't do with God or do both. The third thing you can do that's a little, also a little bit more active is to read the Psalms if you're wanting to stay connected to scripture. The words about God's character right now may really repulse you because of just the season that you're in emotionally, not necessarily intellectually. You may know all the right things, all the things about God, but that does not help our heart sometimes. It can, it really can. It can keep us grounded, not let go of the truths that you know about who God is, but you have to make experience of your emotions. If not, you will become apathetic because your emotions have to go somewhere. Your perceptions need to be worked out, even if they are going to be reframed. And they may be, a lot of them might need to be reframed. If you're going to be in scripture at all, read the Psalms because they articulate the language of our hearts. 60% of the Psalms are laments. So they're going to give you language to articulate your heart before God. Meditate on them. You do some Lectio Divina um, where you're asking maybe God, what are you saying in this? What's popping out? What's resonating with me? Or what's repulsing me from this Psalm? Because bringing um, God's word into your heart can actually help create a reservoir of not just knowledge, but heart language for when you might get triggered again. And you might be reminded of the pain that you're experiencing. Fourth thing that you can do that's pretty practical is write your own Psalm. Journal, write your own Psalm and write it to God. Write God a letter. If staying in prayer is aggravating to you, if you're going through a season that is hard, you're probably feeling drained, emotionally tired, fatigued, agitated. You may have a ton of stuff going on, but writing down in your journal can be very therapeutic. There's tons of studies about that. I don't have any that I know off the top of my head, but I know there are, that it can be very helpful to write about what you're experiencing. And I would write a psalm to God, a lament. Just let it rip towards God. And that could be something that you can go back later and you can see the difference in the growth, especially in this season, if it feels like you're in a dark cloud, going back and looking how you how you journeyed through this process can help you see that you're growing in increments that day by day you may not see the one percent changes but you may actually be really you may be really healing from this season and you may get discouraged if you don't see the road signs that you are in fact growing number five this is just an environmental thing if you, i don't know what the particulars are but this might be helpful so take it for what it's worth but changing your environment when you are in a place where your soul is desolate where you are feeling like you are not connected to god and you are angry and bitter don't be around environments that are going to agitate that even more. And that might seem simple, but I find that that's one of the last things that I do. I tend to push through and go, no, I can handle it. Oh, it's fine. If I had a, you know, upset, you know, interaction, maybe at work, all just like vacant. And instead, actually, I would encourage you to care for your soul in this season, change your environment. That doesn't mean you're going to change it forever. It just means for right now, you are in a season where you are more, you're needing more. And that is okay. Give yourself permission to need more. Don't be in environments that are going to continue the distress. I met with somebody recently who had some experiences at 
a local church and she went to a different church and just felt the same type of agitation and felt guilty that she couldn't, she wasn't going to church because I felt she felt so agitated. And so, but I reminded her, you're still reading your Bible, you're in your small group, like the church building itself may be really agitating to you, but that doesn't mean you're actually losing your faith. It just means in this season of healing, you need to maybe change your environment. That gave her permission to go, okay, I need to honor my feelings. I need to honor where I'm at while I'm pursuing the truth, while I'm pursuing what God is doing. Because these, these seasons are not final. If you do the work and you allow God to heal you in these places. I hope this video was helpful. We talked about some common mistakes. When you're feeling betrayed by God, it's easy to get hard thoughts towards God and to close up. But I encourage you to stay open in these five ways that I talked about. It's really hard when we need the very person that has hurt us. And God isn't like our parents. He isn't like our boss. He isn't like any of those people. God is those things that you believe he is. His word tells us that he is compassionate and slow to anger and rich in love and he is full of kindness. And yet you don't have to fake believing that in those emotional places of your life. As you know, that's true intellectually. You have to make space for your perceptions so that they can be transformed by the love of Christ. You have to do that by being open and honest about them. And that's gonna take time. I don't know how long that's gonna take for you, but I know that if you continue to, you know, do some of these things that I suggested in this video, that you will begin to heal and you will see God and you will have grown closer to him in ways. You're probably in a season like Jacob, they wrestled with God. You may not come out unscathed. I cannot promise you that, but I can promise you that you have a God who loves you and your hurt is not going to be wasted, that there's a gift in there somewhere. And I pray that you find it. If you're interested in spiritual direction, I do have availability. So you're welcome to click the link below to sign up for a 30 minute consultation. And I'd love to meet with you, pray with you, see if we'd be a good fit, or I can refer you to other spiritual directors if you want, but I encourage you not to go it alone. Also, if you have other questions about the spiritual life and about growing with God or any questions from this video, my email is below. Please email me. I will open to any question, um, any question about God is not off limits. I might make other content about it because I really want to know and hear from you what resonates, what do you have more questions about that I could make content on. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will be praying for you in this season. Um, don't forget to subscribe for more content and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.